Crazy on an all-new Dr. Phil. I believe that I've written hundreds of songs for multiple artists. Is he a liar? Do you believe you wrote Shake It Off? I do. Taylor Swift doesn't believe you wrote the song. Delusional. You're walking in the neighborhood, talking to yourself, playing to get to with no shirt. You're screaming in a restaurant, I miss Taylor. That's definitely odd behavior. Or a master manipulator. You and I know you didn't write those songs, right? Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. This is 23-year-old Riley. He says he loves music and doesn't have to dream of being a songwriter because he's been writing since he was a little kid and has already created more than 100 songs recognized by millions. His biggest claim to fame, he says, is writing for Taylor Swift. But his parents say this isn't his dream come true. It's his delusion. They wrote to me wanting to know if their son is mentally ill or just a master manipulator. My son Riley lies. If his lips are moving, he pretty much is lying. My stepson Riley is a liar and a thief and just lies just for the sake of lying. He'll manipulate any situation to get the result that he wants. Riley is definitely delusional. Riley has claimed that he has collaborated and written songs with a variety of famous artists. I tell myself Riley has delusions that he has collaborated with Three Doors Down and that he wrote Kryptonite. Riley is definitely focused on Taylor Swift. An example of this is when I took him out to eat. He just broke out and said, I love her. I love her, man. He said, you told me I was going to meet her. Where's Taylor? When am I going to meet her? And he gets his giggle, this laugh. I believe that I've written hundreds of songs for multiple artists. I think I just said too much. We're going to start with the Taylor Swift thing. We were meant to be together. He has vivid memories of meeting her when he was a child and says he believes that she's in love with him and that they are soulmates. I believe that Riley is unhappy, is struggling, and is more than likely mentally ill. I don't feel like we have seen the worst of this situation yet. Okay, obviously you're very concerned here, and you say that you don't think you've seen the worst of the situation yet. Why do you say that? I believe uh, when you hear about all the bad things that have happened in the world, you always hear people say, well, we saw signs, or we thought we saw signs, but we never did anything. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be in that situation. We don't want to be those parents. We're trying to watch out for anything that we can see that would prevent something worse from happening. Right. When was the first time you noticed what you would consider to be unusual behavior? Probably in uh, 2010. He um, just starts with talking about living multiple lives and living many years ago. He talks about feeling the actual you know, birth of being born. And it just has gotten progressively worse and more frequent. Okay, so that would have been when he was about 18. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he starts saying what you consider to be bizarre sort of verbalizations, just talking to you about stuff that, did this, like one day that wasn't the case and the next day it was? Um, I would say if I had to describe his behavior, we started out describing him as odd. It progressed to weird, to now crazy. Is there a day, is there an event, is there a circumstance, a trigger where Everything was fine, and then there was that first time, that first moment, where he said something way off the wall. We always knew there was substance abuse issues, but was when we went to the rehab, it was when they started telling us he's talking about Taylor Swift, he's supposed to be with her, so for me it was 2014. <laughs> The first thing I remember, obviously, was obviously associated with drugs. And when I found the drugs in his when car, 
Um, that would have been his in between his junior his junior year, 16, 16 and a half, and I found a lot of drugs, Xanax, and I don't know what else, into a lot of quantities that obviously I was extremely concerned. And at that point, he admitted he was selling them. He wasn't didn't admit to using them, but selling them, which was disturbing because he he normalized it into the fact that he was an entrepreneur and he had this great business. But he Everything. wasn't making bizarre verbalizations. He, no, so it started he with drugs. He wasn't seeming to be delusional at that right. point. Right. Because here's what he said. He says he got into drugs as a way to rebel against you. I can see that. He said that you have had men in a revolving door in his life. There's one man after another in and out of the house and that Daryl is your fourth husband. That is correct. His bio dad is verbally abusive to him and in fact sabotaged his sobriety when he was struggling to get sober, forced him to drink, called him a wimp for not drinking. He's been to rehab twice. He's robbed everybody he's had access to rob. He's robbed his brother, robbed his grandmother, robbed y'all. So we can agree for sure that his life's not working for him. Something's out of whack here. Correct. Yes. Okay. And we can agree that he's been a liar and a manipulator from a very young age. Yes. And maybe it's just grown in proportion. Yes. And that was one of our considerations is, is he just on stage with this yeah. grand plan? Well, we're talking about him, he. Riley claims he's written songs for Taylor Swift and is just waiting on royalties from hundreds of other famous songs. Robin and her husband Daryl say that none of that is true. They say the only truth they can agree on is that Riley has had more than his share of troubles. My parents think I'm crazy, and I think I am too. I believe that I've written hundreds of songs for multiple artists like Taylor Swift, another one being Tom DeLonge and Anxious and Airwaves. When I do write these songs, 85% of the time, I do not physically write with pen and paper. I feel like I've been here before where I'm watching my life like a movie. My ups and downs may be a little extreme, but I feel to truly experience this life I gotta go through the ringer. This has been a life journey for me, and I, I do thank Tita, as I call God, for the ghostwriting, the Taylor Swift. Everything has been a part of this journey of self-mastery. I'm okay with being crazy. I, I'm great with that. I think crazy is great. All right, it's good to meet you. It's good to meet everyone, yeah. Yeah. Um... So you've been watching the show up till now. I have, I have. And because uh, I wanted you to be fully up to speed with everything that we were talking about. They are concerned that you are confused between what's real and what's not real. Are you confused? I'm not. I don't believe I am. Yeah. So tell me what's real that they think is is not. They say that you believe that you are a prolific songwriter okay. uh, and a good one, and that that is a fiction, a fantasy. So which is it? That's a difficult question, strictly because if like to really go into it, I have to start going into like the metaphysical world. So by following my passion, which is songwriting and music and experimenting with different things and exploring myself, I'm figuring out who I am and I'm experiencing myself. Sure. Um, when it comes to being a songwriter and writing songs, I have. What uh, kind of music do you like? I like all, all types of music. I know it's a very, you know, standard answer for most people, but I mean it, um, I'm completely genuine when I say that. I, I listen to well, rap music. I, mean, I, I listen, like country yeah, and western. Yeah, country and western. Absolutely. Uh, definitely some alternative rock, um, some pop, you know, throw Taylor Swift in there. It's definitely a good day. Um, so, yeah, I, I try not to play prejudice to one genre over another. I believe that they're just different emotions being conveyed by the artist. Taylor Swift and I are soulmates, and I love her with the kind of love that you would want forever and always. 
I've known Taylor for a number of years. Is there any reason that she would tell me that she had never heard of me? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, she swears she was tortured. In that garage, I was held captive. But the children who survived that house of horrors... She was able to eat while my father starved us. ...claim she's lying. She was not held captive. No. She was not abused. No. For the first time... Lauren was a part of what my dad was doing to us. Yeah. Wrong. They're speaking out. You had your time to talk. It's our time. It's our time. That's tomorrow. I will apologize about my stubbornness with the hat and um, the toothpick and the journals and everything, but I, I have to make it very clear that a part of my art is fashion. I do recognize that I am more a soul-based creature, but how I appear to others in my physical form is extremely important to me because it is my art form. Would Shake It Off be your biggest commercial hit? No. The Shake It Off song, and if people don't know, here's Taylor Swift during the making of the Shake It Off video. Very cool. This is the most exciting video I've ever had. What I did to prepare for this shoot was I did a lot of running, which I hate. These are the longest shoot days I've ever done. Hopefully it's paid off. That was a really big song for her. Cool. And it seemed like a really personal song yeah. for her. Absolutely. Uh, but... When you wrote the song, were you writing it from her point of view? Were you writing it from your point of view? Well, I mean, I, I think definitely from her point of view. Uh-huh. Did she tell you her point of view? No, I think it was more or less um, just me trying to empathize with the situation and maybe considering how I would feel if some of these things were going on. Um, yeah. Yeah. Now, I've known Taylor for a number of years. Cool. Uh, I've known her mom for a number of years. Is there any reason that she would tell me that she's never met you, heard of you, or worked with you on a song? You know, I, I, I wouldn't say no. I, I wouldn't know. Is there any reason that she would tell me that, she, that you didn't write that song or that I've, she didn't work with you on that song, that you had nothing to do with that song, and that she had never heard of you? There's not. There's not a reason that I can think of why she would say that. Is there any reason that you wouldn't be listed on the song as a writer, either uh, under your ghostwriting name of Sixth Man yeah. or under your name uh, yeah. as, as and Riley? I, and I definitely admit that there's some questionable thought process going on. And um, with the drugs that I was doing for a number of years, I definitely have to look at some of my past actions and thoughts and really consider reality. So yeah. I definitely see how some things aren't adding up. Yeah, because I, I have Shake It Off here, Very cool. the, the publishing, and it says Words and Music by Taylor Swift, Max Martin, and Shellback. Yeah. And, and you're not Max Martin. I'm not. You're not Shellback. I'm not. I know you're not Taylor Swift. Definitely not. Um, so you're not listed here, and so... If, if you've written this song and you said you wrote it and you wrote it from her point of view. Correct. And as I said before, I've had to take into consideration that I might be wrong. You acknowledge the possibility that you didn't write this song. Absolutely, yeah. And you acknowledge the possibility that you don't know Taylor Swift. Absolutely. And how would you explain thinking, feeling, and telling people that you do? I believe that everything that we are seeing and perceiving now has already happened. We're just catching up with our five senses and really experiencing it fully. So destiny is happening all around us. And my ill attempt at playing God or affecting destiny was uh, to believe, and I, and I want to make it clear, I do believe that uh, Taylor Swift and I are soulmates. And I love her with the kind of love that you would want forever and always. But you said you wrote the song. I understand. And it's just what I believe. Well, do you believe you wrote the song? I do. You wrote Kryptonite. That one, I'm... Um, sure, sure. It's, it, 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 at this point, I mean, we could go over a list of 100 different songs that I feel that I have written um, to point them out specifically. Well, you say you feel like you wrote them. Absolutely. 
This was written by Matt Roberts, Brad Arnold, and Todd Harold. Yeah. You, 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 and as I said before... They don't feel like you wrote it. <laughs> they feel like they wrote it. They feel that when they cash the checks for <laughs> writing it. And you don't get any checks for it, right? I don't. And that's what I'm saying, that you're cheating yourself if you waste your time and energy on things that, that you didn't do instead of focusing on things you could actually do. Yeah. Isn't that cheating you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let's take a break. Up next, we're going to meet Riley's dad, and we're going to find out why he says Robin is a huge part of any problems Riley may have. We'll be right back. I have gone to great extremes to try to be a good father to Riley. I think Riley had too many freedoms living with Robin. Are you ready to make history? Because I have a big, huge announcement to share with you today. You know what, Anthony? I'm going to need you to get up from that seat and get out. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. I have teamed up with Omaze, and I'm inviting you to sit right here. That, that's right, in this empty chair. As my special guest, you and a friend will fly out to Los Angeles, get all glammed up, and join me here on the set for a very special taping of the Dr. Phil Show. But that's not all. Here's where we make history. At the end of the show, you will become the first fan ever to join me and Philip on national television for our signature walk-off. That's right. So start practicing your walk because millions of supportive viewers will be watching. We are going to have a ball. This will be so much fun. And the best part of all is that all entries support my foundation, Win Georgia Smile, and our efforts to help victims of domestic abuse and sexual assault live healthy, safe, and joy-filled lives. Enter to win by donating. Go to omaze.com slash robin. That's O-M-A-Z-E dot com slash robin. Robin blames her ex-husband Randy for their son's endless list of problems. She says his abusive behavior towards Riley is the cause of her son's failure to do the things he's really capable of doing. Take a look. In my opinion, my son's father, Randy, has been verbally abusive to the boys all their life. He told them at a very young age that I may not be their mother. Randy has told Riley just recently that if he was gay, that he would not be part of the family. He would be shunned from the family, wouldn't be welcome, and would have nothing to do with him at all. When I tried to take Riley for counseling when he was about 11, uh, Riley was prescribed some Zoloft for his moods. His father refused to give him the Zoloft and told him counseling was for the week. Riley always just wanted his dad's unconditional love and acceptance. He's wanted to feel important to his father, and I don't think that Riley feels that to this day. Well, you might guess Riley's dad, Randy, sees things very, very differently. My parenting style with Riley is non-confrontational. For several years, anything that would come up with Riley, I usually passed on to his mother. I think Riley had too many freedoms living with Robin to go and come when he wanted to. Been to court several times with Robin over custody. I don't believe Robin had as much control over who Riley was seeing and where he was going. Gone to great extremes to try to be a good father to Riley. I'm kind of like the Waltons. I would be happy if all my children lived on the same street I live on. Thanks for joining us. Um, you, um, do you believe that Riley has some problems, some issues in sorting out what's real and what's not? I certainly do. I hope that uh, we can get to the bottom of it. And you two have a very different view of things. You think that Riley had a very difficult childhood in large part because you think Randy was abusive with him. Yes. And, and difficult with him. Is that true? Were there times that you were very hard on him? 
Uh, I don't think I was hard on Riley alone. I, th I think I'm uh, pretty consistent with all three of my boys. Do you think that um, you were abusive with with Riley, whether it was one of three or three of three or whatever? Do you think you uh, I don't pushed on him too hard? Why do you say that he did? Regularly, they would come home and talk about how if he didn't have to pay child support, then he would be a millionaire or that they would have toys. They were going to lose their home because he was going to have to pay child support. It just goes on. Did he tell you those things? There was definitely a lot of things on both sides that I have no business knowing and would prefer not to know. Um, to be completely direct, there were, yes, yeah, those were some of the things that were said. Riley says he has a total disconnect with his dad. He calls him weak, difficult, and a drunk. Take a look. My dad is a heavy drinker. When you go out with your father and your beer tab's 200 bucks, and then he's driving a Harley home, no helmet. He's too cool for helmet. He's James Dean. I told him I was an alcoholic. He proceeded to make fun of me with his friends and call me weak. If you're drowning, you told your dad, I can't swim. For him to say, buck up, get out there and swim like a normal person, it's, it was confusing and upsetting. I wish I would have chose my words differently. Um, but yeah, essentially, I mean, that conveys exactly how I feel. But what do you say about his perception? My only defense in uh, uh, forcing him to drink is partially right and a lot wrong. I, um, in being a good dad, and I know that doesn't mean go out and get your son drunk, but he had no friends. I was trying to keep him away from his friends, so I took him up to a place that I visited came up there one night and professed he was an alcoholic. First time I'd ever heard anything about it at all. And I'm not the one that called him a wimp. I believe it was one of the other people because he got a lot of peer pressure. A lot of people that were around us were pressuring him. And we were all laughing because we're like, where did that come from? After that though, after he went to therapy, I refused to drink with him ever again. Did you have a discussion about being gay? Um, yeah, because uh, he's told me he uh, wanted to be gay to hurt me because he knows that I wouldn't uh, condone it so much. I know it would affect our relationship. It would. With your son? Yes. But I don't believe he's gay anyway. He's that, said he the, wanted to hurt me. That's not the point. <laughs> I mean, the point is, is that he then calls me feeling very unloved, and I have to reassure him that... If that is who he is, it's okay. And I specific, I called you, I said, would you rather your son be sad, miserable, on drugs, or be in a happy, healthy, functional relationship, even if it's with the same gender? How, and you said, I don't do And I don't believe he is either, but he's dying for your unconditional love and I just think if we're gonna put it out here we've got to put it out here and at the end of the day if we don't acknowledge what we've done then we're not going to be able to help him move forward she says we need to put it all out there we'll, we'll put that to the test with her because when we come back we're gonna find out why Riley blames his drug abuse on his mother we'll be right back I do not trust women because of my mom. I was always told not to do drugs, yet my mother has come home a few times holding her heels, saying she's on the Olympic drinking team, and that the cop let her go after she was going 100 miles per hour on an off-ramp, catching her doing cocaine. That's definitely a big part of why I turned to drugs. Start out with alcohol, moved to marijuana, I tried some cocaine, moved to Oxycontin, that's when the meth came in, still in Xanax, and I get in from my mother's pill cabinet. I couldn't connect with my family without drinking. It's something I had to do to be a part of their world. Well, I just, and just a quick disclosure here. Um, no one ever forced me to drink. Those were, those were my choices, as well as I don't blame either of them for my use. What I did was my own doing, and I made those choices, not them. So mm -hmm. I just want to be very clear on that. It seems to be coming up quite a bit. Yeah. Well, it's not what you said there, but... I agree with what you just said now, but what he's saying is the modeling 
was not great here. I agree with what he just said here. It is his choice. He does make those choices. He has to own that, um, which, uh, but uh, uh, have you modeled some really poor behavior for him? Um, I will say that I am definitely have made some mistakes. There is one or two times that I came home after drinking. I small person. Yes, I my claim to fame was I'm on the Olympic drinking team. Obviously, I'm not because I don't do it very well. For the most part, I was at home with my children. There were not men in and out. I was with their stepfather for 15 years. So it makes me I am concerned about whether his reality is actual reality. Um, have I had drinks? Have they seen me under the influence a handful of times or less over the 20 years? I would say I have to say yes, because that's the truth. Is it my proudest moment? Absolutely not. Um, but everything that I have tried to do um, is to try to lead them in the right direction. And I gave some poor examples. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you said, let's put it all out there. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just trying to yeah. Put it all out there. That's, I, I'm good with it. I'm here. I want my son to have some help. Yeah. Well, this is that help. Mm -hmm. We're, I'm trying to figure out what forces are pushing on him yeah. uh, that could contribute to him escaping the reality in which he lives. So what do you think is going on with you? I um... you think you're fine? You think something's going on that's keeping you from being the best Riley you can be? What do you think, Scott? Well, I, you know, and I, I'm, I'm definitely an alcoholic. Um, when I put a substance in my body that produces ascertain through your liver or kidneys, I want more of it. And I, it, it becomes my air. It becomes my food. It becomes my sleep. I have to have more. Um, I'm definitely, definitely trying to recover from a mental illness, a uh, spiritual malady, and the physical allergy of addiction. There's a lot going on with me. My mental state's extremely messed up. I'm 58 days sober today, and um, thank you. Um, I've, got, I've got a lot of working to do. I, I've got a long ways to go. Well, talk to me as Riley. I, I don't want all your rehab speak. Talk to me as Riley. Okay. You, you give me all the buzzwords. What do you think's going on with you? Um... Uh, okay, I'm to the point now to where, I, okay, uh, the best way I could describe myself is the seven-year-old kid that'll hold his breath until he's purple in the face because it somehow affects his mother and his father. My, my life has been back and forth, back and forth, trying to understand my parents and the divorce and trying to figure out why they feel the way they feel or what they're doing, what I'm doing to make them feel this way. And then it got to a point where I was just like, I'm done with this. I'm going to inflict as much pain as possible. And the only way that seemed to really hurt them was to hurt me. So I started looking for the things that they always told me not to do, drugs being most important, the um, interracial coupling, and uh, the homosexuality. Um, I didn't really get the reaction I wanted. Obviously, I can't change my sexuality or my race. So I definitely went towards the alcohol and drugs to affect their life and their environment. Um, I, I've been lying for a really long time. I've been manipulating, I've been hurting, and I'm trying to figure out and remember who I was before all of that, which happened at such a young age. So it's like, I don't even really know who I am. So I'm trying to find me. You're hurt, you're not getting credit for riding Shake It Off and Kryptonite. Me too. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Tortured. My father starved us. He would beat them. In a house of horrors. Padlocks on all the doors. Windows screwed shut. Eight siblings tell their story for the first time. That's tomorrow. What's all this about? I, I, I wrote a hundred songs, and I wrote this song and that song, because you, you know better than that. Yeah. Come on. Fair enough. Um, I think you give me the right word metaphysical we... this and transcendent that and in the moment of this you know you didn't do that and you know when you're getting all of that rolling around your head you're not doing what you could be come look at this with me come over here I, I'm, I'm, this is how you spent some time this is summer of, of 14 
you're walking in the neighborhood, talking to yourself, singing and playing your guitar with no shirt. You say you're in love with Taylor Swift. You're writing letters to her and her dad. Now, this is summer of 14. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Does that pay pretty well? Yeah, no, that, that definitely, yeah. Doesn't yeah. pay really well. Okay, we come up to November. You said you haven't seen Robin in three years, and she's in an arranged marriage, and you want to go to the VMAs to meet Taylor Swift. This, this is where your head is in November of 14. You say you haven't seen your mother in three years. Okay, yeah. That's not true. That's not true. Why are you, you're, why are you wasting your time with that, that rhetoric in your head? That You know that's not true. It's definitely illogical, yeah. Okay, then December. Okay, you're screaming in a restaurant, I love her, man, I miss Taylor, I miss her, man. You told me we were gonna to be together. Why would you lie to me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're, you're at a restaurant eating with somebody <laughs> and you start spewing this <laughs> You know better than that. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So, but, so you, but you decided to do that. I did. Why? Explain it to an old country boy. <laughs> that, that, that was very difficult. Um, I definitely was not in the right frame of mind, and maybe I, maybe I was still trying to hold on a little bit to my parents' help. So they, I, that, I don't know how to explain the unexpl unexplainable. That's definitely odd behavior. Try me. I'll keep up as best <laughs> I can. Uh, I, 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 that, that one's tough for me. All right, January 15, you're hurt you're not getting credit for writing Shake It Off in Kryptonite. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and just to refer back to what I said, I'm not hurt by not getting credit for any of the songs that have inspired me or I believe that I've written. Um, I'm definitely hurt for other reasons, but that's but not one. But you don't believe you wrote those songs? I don't. You don't believe you wrote those songs? No. I believe you could. Thank you. I, I do. But you, but you didn't write those songs, and you know damn well you didn't write those songs. Yes, sir. Now, you can tell somebody else you wrote those songs, and cool. you can string a bunch of buzzwords together and get them confused, but you and I... Fair enough. You and I know you know damn well you didn't write those songs. Fair enough. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, just checking. Yeah, we're good. Okay, February 15th. Says he met Taylor Swift when you were seven years old. Says he remembers being born. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that one, yeah. I remember the statement. Yeah, you remember yeah, the yeah. statement. Yeah. And then here, September 15, you says you lived two past lives and you reincarnated. I have said that. I don't know whether that's true that's or not. Okay. I know it's true enough. you said it. I don't know whether you've lived two prior lives yeah. or not, because I wasn't there, but I'm here for this one and you're wasting it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm saying. You can do better, right? Yes, you can do better. So as I look back at here, that starts in September 14, and it comes here to September 15. That's the last year. Yeah. And that's how you've been spending your time in the last year. It's been a wild ride. You are intelligent. You are disgustingly good looking. You, you, I know. Camera loves you. I look like an old catcher's man. Okay. Now. My whole point is that's your last year. You have more talent, you have more intelligence, you have more potential than that. You are self-indulgent to allow yourself to wander off into this fantasy. You can do better than that. Thank you. you can do better than that. Now, all right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. Robin says Riley's bad behavior has not only affected her marriage, but also the rest of the family. She calls her older son, Brad, the normal one. 
She says her sons are so close in age, but worlds apart in their behavior. Uh, um, Brad, thank you for being here. How, how far apart are you guys in age? Year and a half. Year and a half. You, um, you love your brother, right? I do. You trust him how much? Not a lot. <laughs> like as much as you could throw him? Um, as the old saying goes? That's about it, yep. Not yeah, and you actually gave him a job. I did. Because you, you have a landscaping. For business, a short right? while I did, yes. Yeah, for a short while. <laughs> and you hired him, and what happened to all your equipment? I don't know where the blower went. $400 blower, don't know where it went. Middle of the night, we got done with all our lawns. We mowed twice a week, so Thursday and Friday. Thursday night, it was gone. Don't know where it went. Just disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like uh, he may have absconded with that, pawned it or something? It, it's, it's gone. I have n no idea where it went. My mm. roommate said that he heard a truck or something in the middle of the night around 4 or 5 a.m. Yeah. Nothing else was missing. Nothing else was going on, but that was gone. And you've distanced yourself to protect yourself. I have. How much do you miss him? I miss him a lot. I mean, I remember back in the day, uh, it was incredible. We would, uh, whatever the situation was, good or bad, we really just kind of compounded on each other. If I would say something funny, he would have something on, like, right back, ready for it. Like, I didn't even see that coming. It was incredible, you know? And it always ended up so much better than you could imagine it. And, uh... We kind of went our separate ways, and things happened how they happened, and now there's not much to talk about. So you guys would kind of, you can kind of see you guys being the dynamic duo again. Yeah, that would be nice. I've always been very envious of uh, a couple brothers in our school that did everything together, and we definitely lost our way in high school. Definitely. How about you? Do you miss your brother? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Um... It's been too long. I think he's maybe a reason to um, fight your way back to uh, absolutely and to this um, world. I mean, there's so many reasons on why I should have turned this around so long ago. I am just, <clears throat> I, 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 it's t difficult to understand. It's really baffling. I, I wish I would have been able to do it for you guys. I, I really do. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. You have got momentum in the wrong direction. I want to change that with you, and this is just the beginning. Now, I, I have to tell you, you're making a lot more sense than you were when you got here. Okay. Which tells me that you have the ability to focus. You have the ability, at least in a short period of time, to focus and carry on a, a conversation. Would you agree? I would. You understand what we're talking about right now? You do. Do you agree? Yes, Dr. Phil, but I don't want to minimize the situation, but... We I don't want to minimize it either. I know he's charming. I know he's a chameleon. I know he can adapt to a situation. Yeah. This is not my first rodeo. Right. <laughs> if you think he's manipulating me, if you think he's conning me, keep it up, buddy. Keep it up. Because he's making common sense. An hour ago, he was talking to me about metaphysical transcendence. <laughs> now he's saying, yeah, I didn't write the song. I get it. Is he telling me what I want to hear? Maybe, but he's saying the words, I didn't write the song. He says those a hundred times, he starts hearing, I didn't write the song. 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 And you know, one of those is going to hit through and he's going to go, holy I didn't write the song. Whoa! I didn't write the song. Introduce Frank Lawless right here. Dr. Frank Lawless. He's the chairman of our advisory board. He's co-founder of the Lawless PDP and Peace Center. 
I asked him to come here because I think that this young man can be a good deal better in a short period of time with two things. I think number one, he needs a really good evaluation, which has not happened. He's 58 days sober at this point, which is a huge jump, yeah. huge jump. I do think he needs to be in a dual diagnosis treatment center right now with a focus on the mental illness parts of this, with a focus on the neurological parts of this, and giving him some coping strategies. I think you couple that with a life coach that can begin to do some things to really get him some traction, and I think this is a very charming, talented, intelligent young man who can really get some traction. And so I want to offer to send you, I'm doing this with you, not to you, to send you to a place called Origins on South Padre Island. Robert Park is sitting right next to him. He is executive vice president, he's the director. So I asked him to come here with Dr. Lawless, these two guys right here. And Robert, you've been listening to this whole thing. You guys can design a program to help this guy, right? Absolutely. We'll work with Dr. Lawless and our psychiatrists and all our recovery experts at the center, and we're going to figure this out. And, and, and Frank, we, we, need to look at, we need to look at the neurology that's going on here as well. Don't you agree? I agree, and he will get better as he begins to get control of his brain and his neurological impulses. And like you said, I think the world can be at his hands. Fair enough. Absolutely. All right. Plan? Plan. All right, I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Dr. Frank Lawless and Robert Park. We will see you next time. Mom, thanks so much for all you've done this today. Thanks for doing it. Randy, thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.